Hey everybody and welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. In this video, we're going to expand on our previous code and we're going to add a screen which displays a character in our location if they are present. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed and hit that notification icon. That really helps me out. And also a huge thank you to my members and patrons. Your names are going to be running across the bottom of the screen as we speak. So what I've got here inside my images folder inside a folder called UI and then another folder called avatars is a folder called Danielle. If you remember, we called all of our characters Danielle with a capital D. So that's the name that we've chosen for our folder for this avatar. And then inside that folder, we've got three images, one happy, one neutral, one sad, all called Danielle underscore and then the mood. So in order for us to be able to utilize that, what we first need to be able to do is actually tell RenPy where the files are. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, in our n person class, we're gonna add a new property. So I add a property decorator like that. And we're going to define our avatar like that. Uh, if self.love equals we're actually going to give it a range let's be let's give it a range so if minus 10 is less than self.love which is less than let's say 10 so we've got a minus 10 to 10 is going to be the range of our neutral mood then we're going to say mood equals neutral like that. And at the start of the property, we're going to declare this is neutral just as our like default. And we need to put an underscore at the start of that as well so that we can. And in fact, I think we're just going to put neutral.png. <laughs> that will make life a lot easier for everybody involved. There we go like that uh, so we're going to say now elif uh, self dot love is less than or equal to minus 10 mood equals underscore sad dot png and then last but not least else self dot love is greater than or equal to 10 mood equals happy dot png i was supposed to say elif sorry my bad elif there we go so now we've got three outcomes and it's always going to be one of these three dependent on whether we add or subtract but it's a it's basically saying if it's less than minus 10 then they're going to be sad if it's greater than 10, they'll be happy. If it falls somewhere in between, then it'll be neutral. So there's no way that this will return nothing. And because we've set our mood neutral dot PNG, uh, kind of like as our fail safe, just in case by some miracle, uh, something else random happens, then we can, you know, if <laughs> mood becomes infinity or a J number, then we'll still have a mood there. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to say return and we're going to say self dot name. That's their first name plus mood. And when we run that. If we were to type uh, print npc zero dot avatar it should give us danielle smith all right so there you go we need we've we've spotted an error there we've got danielle smith so <laughs> which is of course her name so we actually need her forename so we're gonna say forename like that so when we test that again now we've got danielle underscore neutral dot png 
which is the exact file name we've got there. So now we've got the file locations sorted. Now we need to put them on the screen. Now what we're going to do in a little bit is we're going to actually turn the image that appears on the screen into a button so that when you click on a character, it will display any available uh, dialogues with that character in a choice menu somewhere on the screen. But for now, all we want to do is make sure that we're actually displaying the characters if they're present. So we're going to create a new screen. So in our screens folder, we're going to create a new file and we're going to call this character screen dot RPY. And we're going to define a new screen. character underscore screen. Now there's many, many different ways that we could do this. And I did encourage people to have a go at trying to figure this out on their own. And if you've managed to do this, then that's fantastic. I'm actually quite proud of you. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna do this my way for the sake of this tutorial. It's pretty simple actually. What we first need to do is declare a variable, which is going to be called, hmm, let's call it just, char x and uh, we're going to put pound sign in front of that because we're in rempi code now and we're going to say our starting position is going to be let's say 200 yeah i think that's pretty good and the reason we're going to do that is because we want our characters to be a certain distance apart from each other if we were to put them either in an h box so that they were positioned exactly next to each other that's great but if one of them were to change in x dimensions for any reason you know it was to be wider because the character was doing a different expression then it would cause everybody to the right of that person to shift right as well and we don't want that because that's going to be quite jarring what we can also do by using an actual x position is we can have them overlapping slightly if we want to as well which is just going to make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing if you have lots of people on the screen so we're going to start off with our X position being 200, which is kind of about here. And then it'll spread across the screen to the right uh, if and when we need it to. So what we're going to say now is for Q in NPC. If Q dot location equals location. And all we're going to say is button, image button, sorry. And what we're going to say is uh, idle is going to be q.avatar. Hover is also going to be q.avatar. X pause is going to be char underscore x. And y align. 1.0 so it's going to be at the very bottom of the screen and we're also going to say focus underscore mask true and that means that you have to actually click on opaque pixels rather than see-through ones so you're not going to get that weird effect if you click off to the top right hand side of the character or something it's only going to work if you actually click on visible pixels and then we're just going to say action uh, we're just going to say null action for now. And there we go. So that should, in theory, display our character when we're in the correct location. So we're going to just come back to our main UI file now, if we've got it open at the top, which we have. So we've got currently our background image and we've got these, the top bar. So what I actually want the characters to appear on is the layer directly above the background image so that other UI elements will appear on top of that. So we're gonna say use character underscore screen. And we're gonna make sure we get the capital S's in because if we go back to here, we can see we've got a capital S there. As you can see, we are currently not uh, able to see anybody. So if we double check where we actually defined our NPCs, you can see that they're currently all located in the library. Um, so let's find out if they are actually in there or not. Now we should, in theory, because they're all identical, we should see 
um, five people in the library so we may need to build the library i don't think we've got it accessible to us yet no we haven't so we need to add some money until we can build the library can we build it yet no nope, still not able to build that just yet there it is build the library now we go to the library and there's a deliberate mistake so in our classes file where we define our avatar what we actually forgot to do is include the directory tree so we're in images we're in ui forward slash avatars forward slash self dot for name put a plus in there now we go to the library there we are we've got Danielle present in there but as we can see all of the buttons are currently in the same location so we're going to close that down and what we're going to do is come back to our character screen here and we're going to say right here actually we're going to do it after the image button declaration it makes sense and we're going to say char underscore x plus equals and we're going to say 200 so we're going to build our library again we need to get 20 grand saved up that's a pretty expensive library now we go to our map our beautifully designed map we click on the library and there we go now obviously <laughs> this is a little bit harrowing because we um don't know five quintuplets who wear the same outfits and stand in exactly the same pose but in the case of your game you're going to have different characters with different names and it will display them uh, individually now for the sake of technicality these are five separate characters they all just happen to have exactly the same name they all happen to be in exactly the same location and they all happen to have exactly the same appearance but that's all because we made it that way when you define your characters and you create your character renders you're obviously not going to have these people looking exactly the same and what we can do is we can actually so let's say we're going to change the mood of a couple of these characters. So we're going to say NPC. Uh, let's say NPC2. Dot love equals minus 15. And as you can see, she's not looking too happy anymore. <laughs> so if we go back and we're going to now make the girl next to her. And we're going to make her super happy. We're going to give her 50 love points. As you can see now, she's smiling as happy as can be. So it's showing us different expressions dependent on whether their love is at a certain level. Now, obviously, you could expand on this. You could have your, you could have a character with five or six different kind of levels of mood. And you could change the... Um, the kind of the brackets when you define in your avatar when you define your mood you could change these kind of ranges and you could have more just by adding more elif statements but essentially that's kind of the basics of that down and we can obviously change the locations of one of our characters so let's put npc uh, let's put npc3 and we're going to change her location to The living room if we hit that now she's gone so if we were to now go to uh we don't have a living room. <laughs> so we're gonna have to build the living room build that and i'm not entirely sure i think we may have made a boo-boo there yeah we have so we need to change that to a small r and there she is in the living room and ready to chat so that's all there is to that i'm gonna let you guys go and expand on that if you need to do your renders get your characters set up tw tweak the code that we've already got in place to get this working how you want it to change the distance apart you can 
If you wanted to, you could add X, Y coordinates to your characters and have them appear in a different position on the screen. The options are really limitless on this one. And in the next video, we're going to turn these characters into buttons that when you click on them, it will provide you with a list of dialogues that are currently available for that character. And of course, as always, I will encourage you to have a go at doing that yourself before the next video comes out and see if we come up with the same code. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.